Today we will examine the maintenance procedures for the Stone Age Warthog WHR Magnum, our sewer nozzle for 6 to 18 inch pipes. It is specifically designed for longer life and better operation in the harshest environments, retaining jet quality under poor water conditions and taking the unmatched power of the Warthog sewer nozzle to the next level. To perform these procedures, you will need Mobile, Mobilux EP1 Grease, P80 Grippet, 242 Loctite, Spacers, a rubber band, slot screwdriver, seal installing tools, large adjustable wrench, hex head wrench, blue goop, a pick, Torx wrench, modified snap ring pliers, 3 8 inch socket drive and extension, a hex socket, and a medium sized adjustable wrench. A press and a vise will also come in handy. Before we dive in, let's review the main features for the WHR Magnum. You have a half inch inlet nut, back plate, body, centralizer fins, front nut, and shaft. Looking closer at the front end, you can see the shaft assembly, front nut, and two brass set screws. The inlet end has four torque screws securing the back plate and fins to the body. Finally, the body has two port screws for viscous fluid. We'll cover those later. Begin disassembly by placing your WHR in a vise with the inlet end facing down. Use the wrench flats on the inlet nut to secure. With an eighth inch hex wrench, remove the two brass set screws from the front nut. Set them aside. Now flip the tool in the vise and secure using the wrench flats on the front nut. Take a rubber band and place it around the centralizer fins as shown. This will keep them manageable as you remove the back plate. Using your Torx wrench, remove the four screws holding the back plate on. With the plate off, you can slide the five centralizer fins out of their slots and set them aside. Use a pick to remove the weep seal from the inlet nut. With an adjustable wrench, loosen and unscrew the inlet nut. There are several wear items inside. We'll extract those in a moment. With the inlet nut off, you can see the wear items inside the body. We'll remove those now. Start with the large wave spring. Use your pick to remove it. Next, Use modified snap ring pliers to remove the carbide seal. This too is a wear item. With the seal out, you can remove the small wave spring and finally the o-ring down in the shaft cavity. Next, remove the two port screws from the body. Now slide the shaft assembly out of the body. You may need a press for this, however, you can also use a solid surface like a vise or a workbench to extract it by hand. Set the shaft assembly aside and turn your attention to the body. Secure the body back in the vise using the wrench flats on the front nut. With a large adjustable wrench, loosen the body as shown and unscrew. Note, there are still components inside the body. We'll press those out in a moment. The front plate should still be in the vise. Use a pick to remove the o-ring at the base of the threads. Gently pry out the shaft seal with a slot screwdriver. This is also a wear item. Set the front plate aside and place the inlet nut back in the vise. Using either your modified snap ring pliers or the seal extractor from your toolkit, remove the carbide seal. This carbide seal is different from the one you just removed from the body. The seals are not the same and they are not interchangeable. Be aware of this when you start reassembly. Back to the inlet nut. Remove the wave spring that sits underneath the carbide seal and the o-ring down in the shaft cavity. Remove the o-ring at the base of the threads and finally pry out the shaft seal as shown. That's it for the inlet nut. There are still a couple of wear items to be removed from the shaft. Separate the bearing ring and slide it off. You may need the bearing splitter from your toolkit and press for this. 
With the bearing ring off, remove the seal spacer from the shaft and pry out the shaft seal. Finally, remove the O-ring from the groove at the end of the shaft. Move to the press for the next steps. Remove the seal spacer. Press out the bearing ring and the shaft seal using your WHR181 spacer as shown. Set these wear items aside. The stripped out body should look like this. Your disassembly is now complete. Wash all reusable parts in solvent and dry. Replace the wear items with new ones from your kits. Our maintenance kits provide all the wear items for routine service, seal replacement, and general overhaul. We recommend stocking these four kits with your WHR and using all the new parts when you perform these procedures. You'll find a tool kit, seal kit, service kit, and overhaul kit. The WHR 600 service kit has medium viscous fluid, a syringe containing Mobilex EP1, bearings, brass set screws, torque screws, anti seize, shaft seals, spacers, and o rings. The WHR 602 seal kit has two carbide seals, anti seize, two o rings, and two wave springs. The WHR 610 overhaul kit has medium viscous fluid, an applicator containing Mobile X EP1, Torx wrench, O rings, spacers, a wave spring, anti seize, front plug, Torx screws, port screws, shaft seals, bearings, O rings, more wave springs, and two carbide seals. The WHR612 toolkit has a bearing splitter, Torx wrench, and a carbide seal extractor. Begin reassembly at the press where you can install the new items from your kit. We'll start with the front nut. Place a new o-ring at the base of the threads. Next, install a new shaft seal. We recommend P80 Grippet or similar lubricant when installing all shaft seals. Brush the P80 Grippet on the outside of the seal and prepare to install. These seals are two-sided with a lip side and a smooth side. In this case, we're installing the seal lip side down. Position it properly and then press into place using your WHR184 seal installing tool. Repeat the procedures with the inlet nut, placing the new o-ring at the base of the threads and pressing in a lubricated shaft seal again with the lip side down. Set the inlet nut aside for now. Take the body and place it with the inlet end down. Note there are notches in the inlet end and the front end has no notches. Next, press in the lubricated shaft seal, once again with the lip side down. Press it down gently until it rests on the shoulder inside the body. Before moving on, apply a liberal amount of grease to the top of the seal as shown. Keep the grease handy. You'll use a lot of it in these next several steps. Replace the seal spacer on top of the seal and apply more grease. Now press in the SC212007 bearing ring. Note the two bearing rings for this tool are different and they are not interchangeable. The easiest way to tell them apart is the size of the bearings inside. We'll use the one with the larger bearings first. Before pressing the bearing into place, grease one side liberally. Be sure to push the grease down into the ring, coating the bearings. Press the ring into place with the grease side down using your WHR181 installing tool. Now cover the top side of the bearing ring with more grease. You're ready to attach the front nut to the body. Apply blue goop to the threads of the nut and screw it on. Note how the shaft seal face is liberally greased. Screw in the front nut as tight as you can by hand. Now flip the body. You're ready to install the shaft assembly. First, replace the O-ring inside the shaft. Now slide the shaft assembly into the body as shown. Replace the port screws. Note, when you stand the body on the inlet nut, one port screw is lower than the other. Screw that one in tight. 
and tighten the other port screw for now. Start filling the medium viscous fluid into the body. This is a slow process, don't rush it. The objective is to fill the body with fluid and remove all the air bubbles. To do this, we recommend pouring in some fluid and then using the WHR183 hex tool to turn the shaft and settle the fluid. Snap the tool onto a 3 8 ratchet extension and spin the shaft counterclockwise to force the fluid down into the tool. Keep adding viscous fluid and spinning the shaft until the level is just over the top port screw. With the viscous fluid up and the bubbles out, prep the new shaft seal with lubricant and press it into place, lip side down. Use your WHR182 seal installing tool here. But before you press it entirely into place, remove the top port screw. Viscous fluid will ooze out of the port at this time. This is to be expected. Press the seal in gently but firmly. Now replace the port screw and tighten. Grease the top of the shaft seal you just installed. Replace the seal spacer and grease again. Now take the bearing ring you prepped earlier and place it on the stack up, greased side down. Using your WHR182 installer tool, press it into place gently but firmly. Grease the top of the bearing and apply grease to the cavity where the carbide seal will go. Place a new wave spring down in the shaft. Note the O-ring is already in place. Mount the WHR058 carbide seal onto the seal installing tool and press it into place. You should feel the wave spring activating below the carbide seal. Follow that with a new wave spring on top of the bearing ring. It should look like this. Remember our inlet nut? We mounted new parts at the press earlier and now we're ready to finish up. Add some more grease to the cavity that already has a new o-ring. Place a new wave spring on top. Once again, using your seal installer tool, press a new carbide seal into place. You should be able to activate the wave spring with gentle pressure from the press or your thumb. Note, up until this point, we've been liberally applying grease to all the components, and that's crucial. However, there are two places where we don't want grease, on each face of the carbide seals. Make certain they are clean before final assembly, as shown. Use isopropyl alcohol to clean them if necessary. You're ready to reattach the inlet nut. Secure the tool in a vise using the flats on the front nut. Screw the inlet nut into the body and tighten the entire assembly with an adjustable wrench. The body will also tighten up into the front nut. Replace the weep seal over the weep holes. Next, using your rubber band, replace the centralizer fins. With those in place, prep the rear plate holes with a drop of 242 Loctite in each hole. Replace the back plate and screw in the four torque screws. Place a new O-ring on the front tip of the shaft. Flip the tool in the vise and install the two brass set screws with a 1 8 inch hex wrench. Your reassembly is now complete. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please contact our support specialists. Thanks for watching and thanks for choosing Stone Age. Keep on blasting!